Hi again, back for week number three of the uh, college football season for the Georgia Bulldogs. Again, ranked number one, two and oh, coming into uh, the SEC opener against the South Carolina Gamecocks. And uh, we've got Russ Tanner and DJ Shockley here to uh, talk about the, this week's game. And uh, guys, let's start with any uh, any Gamecock Bulldog memories that you guys might have uh, from the long and storied series. Uh, maybe this is not a great story, um, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I remember, obviously, uh, me and Russ's last year playing against South Carolina. I remember the first series of the game getting just drilled on both sides of my helmet and uh, feeling like I might have been uh, concussed in that game. But uh, ended up playing well. You know, just need a little break. <laughs> need a little break. Went to the sideline. Fortunate for us, we went three and out. So I had time to go over there and chill and relax. But uh, no. South Carolina games were always tough, man. They were always physical. Uh, when we played, they were always close. Uh, I think the first year we played South Carolina was Spurrier's first year, and we ended up, you know, winning 17, 15 or something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember diving in the end zone and being scared out of my life in that ball game. But it was uh, always a, a fun game, always a close game, and you knew uh, South Carolina was going to bring it. Yeah, and I think for me, uh, my – my main experience, my main memory from South Carolina was in 2002. I'd actually hurt my hand. Um, you can see a scar right there where um, <laughs> yeah. I, I caught a uh, caught a chest trap buck on my helmet. So I was out that game. I had to travel um, on my own. I wasn't part of the traveling team because it kind of gets scholarship numbers. So I was in the stands with some friends um, just watching the games, a normal fan. And uh, that was the game where Pollock had his coming out party, where he had the strip, sack, interception, fumble recovery, whatever it was in the end zone. That really put him on the map, and I remember just going nuts, like that's my roommate. That's my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that's not your roommate, man. You're sitting up here in the stands with us, and I was trying to convince you, like, no, this play for Georgia, that is my friend. And uh, and I remember that being <laughs> weird, right? Because that stadium, even when they're not great, that stadium is wild. It's loud, and their fans are rabid. So uh, to be there in the stands for that moment when Pollock really had his coming out party is my most vivid South Carolina memory. Well, certainly the uh, the Bulldogs are hoping that Sanford Stadium is is wild and, and electric this week uh, for a three thirty game on Saturday against the uh, the Gamecocks, uh, the conference opener for both teams. Uh, you know, Carolina's one and one, Georgia's two and zero. Oh, and uh, Russ, we'll start with you. What what have you seen out of uh, this Bulldog team through the first two games against two non Power Five opponents? Well, we, we hit on it some last week where that first week, the first game against Tennessee Martin was really just a filling out, like, what do you even have? Receivers and the quarterback weren't always on the same page as far as the timing on some of their routes. A lot of mistakes with the offensive line. They're trying to pick up some stunts and games up front. And, uh, you know, Kirby talked about explosion in the running game. We never really had it. It was a lot of three yards in a cloud of dust. So we were hoping, you know, the old Irk Russell Vince Dooley saying was your biggest improvement because week one to week two – and I think we saw that. Ball State was better than UT Martin. I mean, obviously, they're just still not on the talent level that Georgia is. So, you're, you know, you're fighting down in the weight class, essentially. But the dogs came out and looked a lot sharper, which is what we were hoping for. You know, we moved the ball quickly. Carson Beck's timing looked good. He hit receivers coming out of the breaks. The running backs broke off. And, I mean, can we get a can we get an amen for Dylan Bell getting in the backfield one time and breaking a dude's ankles? I mean, there was some energy, some excitement. A little bit of juice again, which it felt they were missing the first week. So, um, you know, we're going to find out a whole lot more about what this team is like uh, when when the SEC uh, schedule starts, which is South Carolina this weekend. So, you know, excited about week one, week two improvement, but we still don't know a whole lot. We're going to find out very soon. Yeah, I think Russ should bring up some great points about obviously a lot of the conversation was what was going on on the offense side of the ball, why we weren't, you know, cohesive. And I thought, you know, after even though you had a slow start in that first quarter, you reel off 31 points in the second quarter. You get three turnovers, you get three picks. I mean, those are the kind of things that are going to win ball games for you when you put pressure on other teams in that kind of fashion and you give the ball back to your offense for extra possessions. Uh, I think you saw a lot of guys kind of improve. Uh, like we always hear from week one to week two. And I think that's the main thing that Coach Smart and the staff want to see is see these guys be consistent, one, but also improve from week one and week two. Don't make the same mistakes that you made in in those, in those ball games. And I think Carson continues to be more and more comfortable. I had a chance to talk to him, you know, once he came out uh, the game, uh, you know, last week versus Ball State. And he said, man, just – the more reps you get in the live situations, so much better you feel. So he talked about just feeling more comfortable inside the pocket. I thought he was calm. I thought he was relaxed. And then you had guys on the outside making plays. 
and, and stretch of the field. Um, on the defense side of the ball, you saw a little bit more pressure. Teams are still trying to, you know, get the ball out pretty quickly on them. But I thought he did a good job of just being fast, being physical, and creating those turnovers, even though, you know, at halftime, you wouldn't think they created any turnovers because Kirby said they were all luck. So uh, he wanted them <laughs> to uh, he wanted them to be better and better to punch the ball out, which is something I know he's kind of stressed this week is we got to create our own turnovers, not turnovers that go off guys' foot. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and I, and I and I hope with Carson Beck that we see a little bit of his personality start to come out. I mean, we love Stetson because of his personality off the field really reflected itself when he got on the field, right? He's kind of this, you know, a little bit of an enigma. Nobody really knows what he's about. And all of a sudden on the field, you don't – something happens you never expect. So, so far, Carson has played within the system. He's done what Coach Bubba and those guys have asked him to. But as he gets more comfortable, you'll see his personality come out on the field. You'll see him be a little bit more comfortable taking chances, throwing the ball down the field, trying to squeeze into a tight spot because he just feels better about what he's doing. He trusts those guys in front of him blocking. He trusts his receivers to be where they're supposed to be. He trusts the backs to do blitz pickup type stuff. And as that happens, his personality starts to come out. You see him blossom on the field and off the field. And hopefully you see him become the leader and the explosive guy back there pulling the trigger for this offense that we need. I don't know how much you guys have, have seen either of the South Carolina games. You know, that first game against North Carolina um, – Carolina, North Carolina holds them to negative yardage rushing. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they're still, I think, trying to find their way with their uh, running game to carry on. Joiner is now their lead running back, former quarterback, former wide receiver. I mean, they've moved him all yeah. over the place in his long career. Uh, what are your thoughts on that South Carolina running game that uh, really has, has yet to, uh, to generate a whole lot? Well, I think it's the main reason why offensively Spencer Rattler's averaging like over 400 yards passing because they cannot run the ball. I mean, right now I think Spencer Rattler's completing 83% of his passes, which is crazy considering he was sacked, what, nine times against North Carolina, but he still kept coming. So I think right now they're depending a lot on the right arm of Spencer Rattler, him creating on the outside. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing is one thing that we know Spencer Rattler for is being a gunslinger, kind of testing the water a little bit, but he's got zero interceptions right now through two games. So that tells you that maybe he's, you know, had a consistent effort of taking care of the football. So right now, this is a run heavy offense. Uh, Leggett is their, their leading receiver right now. They've got like 15 catches, a couple touchdowns on the season. So he has a favorite receiver right now. Uh, but you're right, Scott. Having a guy like to carry on joining in the backfield as your lead rusher, it just tells you, you know, where they are right now. And uh, I'll be honest, if I played quarterback when I was in college, there's no way I want to go play running back. So it's interesting <laughs> to see him be in that role uh, going forward, but they just have not been able to get that run game going. And I think one thing Russ can probably speak to this more than me is when you're not getting a run game going, you're probably not as physical as you want because you're not moving guys. So that way you're not running the rock. So now – you got to pass block the whole time and kind of catch guys and do stuff like that where it's not as aggressive as in your face running the rock. Yeah, it's, it's not good for South Carolina for Spencer Rattler to be throwing uh, 400 yards a game passing. You know, now to his credit, like Shock said, he hasn't turned the ball over. And his MO in the past has been that he does put them in bad situations by, you know, throwing picks, fumbling the ball, et cetera. So he's done a better job with that this year. But you don't win in the SEC if you can't run the football. If you can't balance what you're doing, it makes it so hard on your offensive line. It makes it so hard on your receivers to not make a mistake. And, you know, Georgia is – you're, you're going to see them make it hard for Spencer Rattler to move the ball down the field. You know, you're not – we're not a big blitzing team a lot of times. We, we pick and choose when we blitz when we bring pressure. But you're going to see our front four, front five, really try to get after Rattler. Then let those DBs, who have been the strength of this defense – really try to eat up space on the backside for us. So, you know, in the SEC, again, if you can't run the ball, you can't win. Bottom line, argue with me. You know, go find somewhere in the annals of the league history that shows differently. It doesn't happen. So you can throw the ball 400, 500 yards a game, but if you can't make that defense respect you, they will shut you down. You can move the ball fine down to the 25, 30-yard line, but when that field compresses on the backside, you're towards the red zone, you can't throw the ball against good defense if they don't have to respect your run game. And, yeah, offensive line, it's a mentality situation, right? I mean, if you go into the all-you-can-eat chicken wing buffet as an offensive lineman, you know that you're about to do damage and absolutely <laughs> destroy what's in front of you. And all of a sudden, your opponent, in this case, chicken wings, are in bad shape, right? <laughs> you go in there hesitant, it doesn't work out well. So 
same thing, same thing when it comes to a game like this. If they're pass setting all the time, they're backing up. They're being polite. Oh, excuse me, pardon me. You want those guys trying to attack and demolish whatever's there and throwing the ball all the time doesn't lend itself to that mindset as an offensive line. So, you know, the Georgia defensive front is licking their chops, knowing that they're going to have more opportunities to tee off and really get after the quarterback as he stands in the pocket. Russ, I'm, th I'm thinking your analogy of chicken wings wasn't just a mere coincidence on South Carolina. I, not this barbecue guy. No, 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 no way. That was a coincidence. <laughs> Look, I eat a lot of barbecue, but we mix plenty of wings in that shock. You know that's the truth. <laughs> hey, these guys were uh, throwing the ball. Now, I didn't. I haven't seen much of the North Carolina game yet. I hope to find some uh, some video of that this week before game time. But uh, last week uh, in their game against Furman. Um, Rattler just deep ball, deep ball, deep ball. They were really going deep a lot. Um, you know, how does how does Georgia match up in the secondary? Russ, you mentioned that's the strength of our defense right now. How does how does our how do our guys match up against uh, teams throwing that deep ball constantly again, with a team with pretty good receivers? Well, I, I'm I'm going to defer a shot and talk about the specifics of the, what the receivers and DBs get to. But here's what I know. Um, Dalen Everett is going to be tested early and often when you look at just who lines up in the secondary for Georgia right now. Mario Lassen, if you read Kirby's comments this week, he throws somebody out there every week as like somebody who's really, really proud of, thankful for. Mario Lassen was that guy. He said he practices like a pro. He walks through like a pro. He takes notes like a pro. He plays like a pro. So you got Mario Lassen on one side, and then which we assume Bullard is still out for Georgia. But you got Tyke Smith, you got Malachi Starks, you got these safeties that are experienced, that are really good football players. So Everett on the other side, who's been playing at that opposite corner from Mario Lassen, is going to be tested. And you know South Carolina, I don't think has a great chance of beating Georgia if they don't throw the ball down the field and explode for some of the big plays that you know scores in a hurry. The chance of them driving the ball 10, 12, 14 plays and scoring consistently against our defense without a great running game is going to be hard. So, yeah, they're going to try us early. They're going to try us often. And Spencer Rattler is going to sling it. What's he got to lose? Like, let it rip, take a chip. Scott, the one thing that came to mind when you asked that to Russ, I thought about last year playing against Tennessee and all the talk was about their pass game and how explosive they are and how they throw it all over the yard and people can't stop them. And the one thing that I think we've learned over the past couple of years is whatever a team does well, Kirby Smart usually has the kryptonite for it. And I think we saw that last year against Tennessee where it was just swarming. They got after uh, the quarterback and they were really, really physical up front and caused a lot of problems. Uh, but I, I think this is a similar thing. I think they come in knowing that these guys can't run the football and Georgia prides themselves on being a good rush defense. And then on the back end, you got a, guy, a lot of guys who played a lot of football. I mean, Rush just mentioned the the numerous amount of guys in that secondary who can get it done. You got a healthy Tyke Smith, like Rush talked about. Obviously, Julian Humphrey is another guy who's played a lot of football already in these first two ball games to go along with Dalen Everett. And then Malachi Starks, who Kirby says has absolutely been night and day since a rookie till he is in a second year. And we know how good he was as a rookie, as a freshman. So it's going to be fun to see the kind of chess match back and forth with South Carolina and, and Georgia and Schumann and uh, and how they feel like they can try to create some havoc on the outside throwing the football. But uh, my money's on Kirby every single time when a team comes in and they have a specialty. He always finds a way to be the kryptonite for it. It's not going to be easy for them to do what they've done all year long. They've got to have a game plan, like Shock said, that's different than what they've shown. And guess what? They probably do have some wrinkles they're going to try. So, uh you know, that's one of the most fun things to watch when you when you love football is kind of how that chess match of strategy versus strategy, strength versus strength, how does that match up? They were uh, they were quite wrinkly last week against Furman. I mean, Luke Doty caught a touchdown pass, their backup quarterback. Uh, they put him in – I think he was in the slot and he ran a deep route and they threw him the touch uh, touchdown pass. And, you know, they've run reverses and, and all of that kind of stuff. I mean, at, at some point, does that – do those kind of plays kind of blow up in your face if you're playing a really, really good team? Yeah, because at the end of the day, this is a, a defense that is fast. And one thing I do know is they're going to be on their P's and Q's. Everybody's got their their keys in a ball game or guys they're watching. And then before you know, you try this reverse and you look up and it's second and 17. And it's even harder to get to third and short now because you tried this trick play and it didn't work. And the guy didn't throw away or you tried to make something happen. This is a defense that's always been pretty fundamentally sound. And, of course, 
couple of these wrinkles are probably going to work. We, we've seen the first two ball games. Both teams had some success really early in the game, and then Georgia defense settled in. So uh, there's always going to be something that they haven't seen, especially in that first quarter, that gives them some success. But after a while, you got to be able to line up in front of that guy in front of you and say, all right, it's man, oh, man, can you beat me? Whether that's in the trenches, whether that's on the outside, on the perimeter, you have to be able to win these one-on-ones. And I like Georgia's defense, especially versus uh, South Carolina's offense in the one-on-ones. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly right. A lot of times those wrinkles are thrown there to make a defense prepare for something different. Um, it may be that you think personnel-wise you got a chance to do something fun, to throw the Luke Doties of the world a bone and let them do something, you know, different. But at the end of the day, back to our food analogy, and I, it'll probably become a theme. We talk about food every week with, with offense linemen on here. But, I mean, if your, your steak and potatoes, the basics of what you do every week are the only way you're going to win games like Georgia versus South Carolina. You don't get enough reps in practice of these trick plays, these wrinkles, all these things, to consistently move the ball in a way that puts the defense in a bad spot to be good at it. You try to throw them in when you see an opportunity. But, you know, whatever they do 80% of the time on, as an offense, Spencer Rattler throwing the ball, which is what we've seen. Unless they do that at a super high level, they're in a bad spot. Now, does he have the ability to do it? Absolutely. Do they have the receivers that can hurt you on the outside? Absolutely. Do they have some personnel where they can try to attack some of our young guys on defense? And we do have really young guys. on. We got a true freshman basically starting an inside linebacker, which is crazy. Side note, I cannot see that number 33 on the field without thinking it looks like our one of our our dudes, one of our guys going back in the day, number 33, Odell Thurman. Oh, damn. He's, uh, he's built like him. He stands like him, moves like him. Um, we'll see if he's as mean and, and nasty on the field as Odell was because that dude was a monster. But, um, you know, South Carolina, they're going to have some rankings. They have some different stuff. But at the end of the day, they're going to try to beat us by executing what they do well, which is Spencer Rattler throwing the ball down the field. 330. 330. How's that number? 330 on good, Saturday for Georgia and South Carolina. Uh, we start our coverage at 1130 on the Bulldog Sports Network. So we hope you join us this weekend for a full day of Georgia Bulldogs football. SEC opener doesn't get any better than that. Russ and Shock, thanks so much, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Go dogs. Go dogs. Go dogs.